There are no words to express the shock, that moment of horror, when two weeks later, as I was listening to the wireless in my room, having returned from a visit with my parents to the Central States, it was announced that Gandhiji had been assassinated. At first I could not believe what I was hearing, but the gravity of the announcer's voice was unmistakable, and as the tears poured down my cheeks, I felt as if I had lost a member of my family. It would not be an exaggeration to say that the whole of India came to a complete standstill, everyone stunned by the death of the father of the nation. In the chaotic hours that followed, it was not clear who had been the assassin. When my father arrived at Birla House, someone in the crowd shouted, A Muslim did it! My father had to think quickly, for such an unfounded rumour could incite civil war. You fool, he shouted back. It was a Hindu. He was proved right. The assassin, a Hindu fanatic from the RSS party. Inside the building, my father found the country's leaders in silent reverence, lost in their distress at the death of their mentor and friend. Nero had somehow to pull himself together to make a broadcast to the nation that afternoon. The simplicity of his words, the light has gone out, summed up our collective feelings perfectly. In keeping with the Hindu custom to cremate a body as soon as possible after death, Gandhiji's funeral was arranged for the next day. His body had been laid on the balcony at Birla House, and in death he seemed so tiny and frail, his head resting peacefully on a cushion of flowers. At first I couldn't work out why he didn't look like himself. Then I realised that his glasses had been removed. His body was carried down to the funeral carriage and covered with a new Indian national flag. Everywhere the crowds pressed in, trying to touch him, and it was a while before the procession was able to start. The Mahatma's last journey accompanied by large crowds of his fellow countrymen, was to take him to the Raj Ghat, the burning ground six miles away on the banks of the holy river Jumna. At the head of the procession, next to the bier, Nero led the people a slow, solemn journey on foot. We went ahead by car, followed by the Indian governors. At the Raj Ghat, we pushed our way through the enormous gathering to a low platform in front of the funeral pyre. In the distance we could see the slow approach of the cortege, followed by hundreds of thousands of mourners.